Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Brian and although I've been building PCs for a long, long time, I wouldn't have always considered myself as a PC gamer. In my early years as a PC person, um, I was more so a tinkerer than a gamer and truly it wasn't until I got my first ever gaming mouse in 2014 that I would actually start considering myself as a PC gamer. This mouse was the Logitech G502 Protus Core, and at the time, I actually got it on sale for about 50 bucks, even though it retailed for $79.99. It was an incredible upgrade over what I was using, and it completely changed my life. Fast forward to a few weeks ago, and I found myself actually at Best Buy staring down the 2018 revision of the G502, the G502 SE Hero. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the differences between the older Protus models and the newer Hero model, as well as talk about the Hero's specs, its performance, and all that good stuff. But before we get into that, I wanna let you guys know that I was not paid or anything to do this review. I bought the G502 SE Hero with my own money, and this review is based on my experiences with the mouse. Also, make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button so that you guys don't miss out on our future content. We will be releasing videos every single week this year. And so there's gonna be a ton of content for you guys to look forward to um, throughout the year. Feel free to also check out the description box below for any related links I may be talking about today. All right, when it comes to the actual design of the G502 Hero, it is nearly identical to its predecessors, the G502 Protus Core and the Protus Spectrum. Um, this is actually a good thing to me because I've always enjoyed the comfort and usability of the original G502s. Now, with that said, there are two major differences that you guys need to know about. The first is that the Hero has a redesigned thinner cable um, that was designed to actually prevent kinks, fraying, and unraveling. And at this point in time, I obviously can't confirm it works because I've only had the um, the G502 Hero for a few weeks, but the cable is much thinner and it feels much nicer than that of the originals. I'm going to try to round back in a few months and add my experiences with the cable, whether it frays or not, in the description box below. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out in a couple months from now. The second major difference is the Hero has the new and improved Hero sensor. This raises the maximum DPI to 16,000 versus the Protus' maximum of 12,000. And now it might sound cool and all, but the problem with this is most people actually use DPIs between 500 and 3,500. And so there really won't be many people who can actually even utilize this increase. When it comes to the Hero and the SE Hero, there is only one difference, and that is the color scheme. The SE has the has this white um, accent color to break up the different parts of the mouse, while the Hero is just a strict all black mouse. Um, what do you guys think about this color scheme? Do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? Let me know in the comments below. I actually love the pop that the white accent provides, and man, I think it just looks it just looks so, so, so crisp. I wouldn't think twice about picking this one up over the original Hero, and I kind of hope, I really hope, I really, really, really hope that Logitech starts to release more, either release more special edition mice with this color scheme, or they just like, you know, change their color scheme to, you know, to this one. Now that we have all the differences out of the way, I want to go over the actual mouse, its features, and what you'll get with it and so forth if you're not if you're not familiar with the G502s already. The G502 SE Hero comes in at 121 grams, and when you add all five optional 3.6 gram weights, the G502 then comes in at a whopping 139 grams. And for a mouse in 2020, I'd say it's a bit heavy. That is until you, of course, add the optional weights and then it becomes like really heavy, um, especially compared to the other mice on the marketplace. But regardless, this is completely preference. So you'll have to be the judge of that. I would suggest going out and testing the mouse out to see if you are okay with the weight. Some people prefer the weights to be higher. Some people prefer the weights to be lower. And you know, you'll have to choose and determine what you like the most. The weights, if you choose to use them, can be positioned in various ways. So you can actually get the feel that you want for your mouse which I have always enjoyed the fact that this mouse includes that kind of customization because it lets us decide what we want 
you know, where, you know, it lets us, lets us decide what's best for us, not like somebody else deciding for us. As for the length, the G502 is 5.2 inches long by 2.95 inches wide. My hands are actually just, um, just over seven and a half inches long, and this mouse fits great in my hand. I don't have any issues misclicking any of the added buttons, and I can reach all of them no problem as well. Of course, that will vary from person to person, and I can see this mouse being a little bit crowded if you have really large hands. This mouse is also intended for right hand users only. Sorry, lefties. I mean, there's nothing I can really do about it, but you know, Logitech designed it for that reason. I mean, you could probably use it if you decided you wanted to, but it would be super uncomfortable and you would be misclicking like the extra buttons the entire time. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. The majority of it is actually made of high quality plastics and they're super nice and comfortable. I typically use my computer for four plus hours a day and I did not notice a single issue with any comfort throughout all of my testing. The mouse wheel on the other hand is made of like a metal and makes uh, makes it super easy to scroll with it. One thing that I did notice about the, the mouse wheel on the, um, the G502 Hero is that it wobbles much more than that on the original G502. Um, and that also includes the fact that I've used the original G502 heavily over its lifetime and the mouse doesn't like wobble at all, really. Even with, again, like I said, with all the wear and tear that it's incurred. This could, of course, just be my particular G502 hero, but I wanted to let you guys know um, just so you guys were aware. Moving on from the build quality, this mouse has 11 programmable buttons. Here is a quick noise test for those of you who are interested. Now you have your standard left, right, and middle click buttons. You then also have the scroll wheel left and scroll wheel right click buttons. I personally don't ever use these buttons, but maybe you'll be able to find a use for them. You have two buttons that are gonna be attached to your left click button. These are initially programmed to increase or de decrease the mouse's DPI. There are two buttons that are gonna be directly above where your thumb will rest, and one that sits at the tip of your thumb as well. I use the two that are above my thumb for macros in many of the games that I play, and they work amazingly. I absolutely love having them there. The one that sits at the, the tip of your thumb it is initially programmed as what they would call the DPI shift or sniper button. This allows you to quickly toggle to whatever DPI you set in the G Hub program. So for example, if you want to lower your DPI so that you can get a more accurate shot or something, you can definitely do that. Lastly, there is the G9 button. This button is in the middle of the mouse and by default is actually used to change uh, mouse profiles. I don't have like any use for this button, but I could definitely see if you do a lot of productivity work and you do gaming work, you could switch back you know, two different profiles for gaming and then one for uh, productivity. I could see it being very useful for that. And so those round up the 11 program buttons on this mouse. But before we move on though, there is also another middle button that can't be programmed, but it unlocks the scroll wheel so that you can do your hyper fast scrolling. I personally don't use hyper scrolling very often, but it is super fun to fiddle with um, here and there. So, you know, you have that as well. Now, in regards to its performance, the thing just like absolutely rocks. In fact, it's as good as or better than any mouse I've ever used. It's quick and accurate regardless of whatever surface I tested on. For the testing, I use my mouse pad, I use my wood desk, I use the glass stand that typically sits underneath my, um, my case, and I also use a few random boxes. Obviously certain services were easier to use than others, but not a single surface had any lag in the cursor or anything like that. Between the original G502 and the newer um, G502 Hero, the performance is nearly the same. I bounced back and forth between both of them and I couldn't really feel any differences between the two. So the question comes out to being like, 
you know, what gives? Why is, you know, why are they the same? Isn't the, the you know, the hero sensor supposed to be a bit better? And, you know, when you look at things, well, the answer is, yeah, it should be better. But there are a couple things that you need to hear me out on um, first. So first off, you have for diminishing returns. And the original G502 sensor, the Pixar to PWM3366 was such a huge step forward in modern mice technology that, you know, even though the Hero sensor could be a lot better, we may never actually feel it because the performance was already so freaking good. Secondly, there is a slight difference. I'm not sure if it's because my original G502 is much older and broken in or what, but the DPI of 3200, which is what I typically set my mice at, um, it feels a tad slower on the G502 SE Hero than it does on um, my original G502. I did the testing and it, the SE Hero just feels a little bit slower. It's not choppy by any means. It just feels like it's a lower DPI. And this could just be me or it could be the hero itself. Um, I'm not absolutely certain, but that's the difference I felt when I was testing the two mice out. And it was pretty noticeable, so I kind of feel like it's, you know, it's 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 the, the hero itself. Obviously, when it comes to the actual performance, it has absolutely no impact on gaming or productivity, and you'll just need to set the DPI a little bit higher for the G502 hero in the Logitech G-Hub software, and then you're gonna be obviously perfectly good to go. Speaking of the software, it's, Pretty good. Um, first off, in the software, you can modify your DPI, you can you can uh, modify your button binds, and you can also modify the color of the Logitech logo as well as the um, indicator profiles or profile indicators. There's truly a ton that you can do in the software, um, such as like launch applications. You can set up a set a button to launch applications, or you set those buttons up to um, do macros or really whatever you really want. For me, I set the buttons on my mouse that are attached to the left click button to alt one and alt two this allows me to kind of use those keys for various tasks in the games i play without actually interfering with previous key binds that i might have on my you know on my keyboard which is really incredible to me i never use a key bind with alt in it so since i use alt one and alt two on those two keys i don't ever have to worry about over accidentally overriding a previous key bind or anything like that anyways you can almost do anything you want with the extra button so you know get creative have fun now with all that said, so what? Should you guys go out and buy the Logitech G502 Hero or SE Hero? And well, since about 2016, I've actually been using the Logitech G900. This is a wireless mouse that is light and it's accurate. The main thing I love about it is the fact that it is, wire it is a wireless mouse and it still performs just as well as if it were a wired mouse. That's why I got it in the first place because it's, it's wireless, I prefer wireless. Um, so when I moved back to the Logitech G502 um, SE Hero for testing, I was initially a little bit concerned because now I was going to be tethered down by a wire. But, but honestly, in my testing, it didn't make as big of a deal um, as I thought it would. The wire is super light and I barely noticed it, even though you know I'm used to a wireless mouse. And the additional buttons that are actually on the mice, uh, on the mouse itself, the G502, help a ton in the games I like to play. Um, you'll have to decide if you like the way it feels in your hand, but to me, this mouse is an absolute no brainer. This is the mouse I would recommend to anyone who needs a mouse, regardless of whether they play games or not. It's just that good and it's that reliable, especially if you aren't the someone that wants to go out and spend a ton of money on a mouse. I actually kind of forgot what I was missing when I switched to the G900 because I wanted that, that wireless so bad. And now I'm starting to think it's time to move back to the G502 because again, I just, I just love it. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs down. Go ahead, it's fine. Just let me know why in the comments below. Also check out my latest videos. They should be popping up like right here. And um, don't forget to subscribe for more tech content just like this. If you have any questions whatsoever, also drop those in the comments as well. Thanks for watching and now I'm gonna get out of here.